So I've been having an interesting discussion in the comment section of my video on stupid anti-gay marriage arguments. A few people have argued that gay people can't get married because the very concept of marriage itself is inherently heterosexual. They were arguing that the entire reason marriage was invented was for the purpose of procreation, therefore if a couple can't possibly procreate, it doesn't count as an actual marriage. Yes, we do still allow infertile heterosexual couples to marry, but since they can still reproduce in principle, it does not defy the definition of marriage. This is an argument that I'm sure they got from that lunatic Alan Keyes about whom I made a video about a year ago. I argued that procreation is part of the reason marriage was invented, but it's not the only one. Another benefit of marriage that I think was at least as important an impetus in its invention was enforcing and encouraging sexual exclusivity. Pairing people off reduces the incidence of guys beating each other over the head over who gets to have sex with whom. And I think that this is one of the reasons that we have never denied marriage to people who are known to be infertile. But when I brought that up, they were like, what? Monogamy? What does that have to do with marriage? That's crazy talk. Marriage is about procreation only. Well, I'm not convinced of that, but let's say that's right. Let's say that allowing gay marriage fundamentally changes the definition of marriage. What's the problem with that? The definitions of words change all the time throughout the course of history, and it doesn't cause complete chaos. As we use words differently, their definitions change. What's the problem? Another comment said something like, well, what if somebody wanted to change the definition of gravity? And that's actually a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The word gravity actually did not apply to the force of gravity until Isaac Newton applied that definition to it. Before that, the word referred to mass or weight. It didn't refer to a force at all. So since then, we stopped using the word to refer to mass and started using it to refer to the force of gravity. Did chaos ensue? No. So let's say that gay marriage does change the definition of marriage. So what? What's the worst that could happen? Occasionally you will hear the argument that if we condone homosexuality, more people will become homosexual and it'll put the survival of the species in danger. This of course assumes that if we condone homosexuality, it'll somehow lead to there being more homosexual people, and that if we don't condone homosexuality, that'll force gay people into becoming straight. And in order to buy that argument, you would also have to believe that it's a zero-sum game between heterosexuality and homosexuality, like the more homosexual attraction there is, the less heterosexual attraction there is. They seem to think that there are straight guys out there who think, hmm, I, I really used to like vaginas, but now that I hear that cock is an option, all of a sudden my interest has just evaporated. Throughout history, there have been a few societies that have been tolerant of homosexuality, and now there are a lot of societies that are tolerant of homosexuality, and we have never seen this epidemic loss of interest in heterosexuality that the homophobes warn us about. That has never happened. It is not happening. Anywhere. But in addition to this argument being stupid, it's also disingenuous. Suppose you asked somebody who made this argument, what do you think would be worse, having a kid who grew up to take a vow of celibacy or a kid who grew up to be gay? If they said that having a kid grow up to be gay would be worse, I think that illustrates that their primary concern is not the survival of the species or indeed the survival of their own genes. I think that would show that their real concern is that being gay is icky to them and they believe that everybody else should think that being gay is icky too. 